I recently sailed on board Celebrity Reflection for the very first time on a nine night voyage around the Mediterranean. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about my experience on board this beautiful ship. We're gonna talk about the food, we're gonna talk about the entertainment, we're gonna talk about the service, and a lot more. Hello everyone, my name is Zach, I am The Traveling Man, and in this video I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on my recent cruise on board Celebrity Reflection. Now, to give you a little bit of context, I have sailed two of the five Solstice class ships of Celebrity before, and this was my third of course in that series of ships, and Reflection is actually the newest ship in that Solstice class. The Reflection was basically an improvement on Solstice and Equinox, and I just sailed Solstice about six months ago and loved it. In fact, I have a review of that ship out, a glowing review, where I tell you all the fabulous things about that ship. So I'll put a link or an info card up here so that you can go and watch that video. But the reflection was basically even better than that. It took all the elements that I loved about Solstice and added on to them. It added additional dining venues. There was uh, more of an expanded lawn club on the back of the ship. There was more art on board the ship. And I actually left reflection thinking that it's probably now one of my favorite ships in the celebrity fleet. Now this was my eighth celebrity cruise overall, and I do favor the Edge class of ships. I think they were the most beautiful ships at sea. However, after selling Reflection, I can't help but think that it's now up there too. It's just a beautiful ship. It's just uh, almost like the best of the Solstice class mixed with the Edge class, because you could sort of see uh, them going toward the E-class of ships with reflection. So if you've never watched a cruise ship review of mine before, how I do this is through my steps review process. And there are five steps, of course, it's an acronym, where the S stands for ship, the T stands for taste, where we'll talk about food, the E stands for entertainment, the P stands for ports, and the S stands for service. Now I will preference my review uh, by letting you know that I was staying in the retreat on this cruise. So some of these reviews might be a little skewed because I was able to dine at Lumine, which is a better food and better service than what you might get in the main dining room. Uh, there's just some things about the retreat that's supposed to enhance the experience a little bit. So my review might be just a little bit skewed because of that. I did want to let you know that up front. I also wanted to let you know that if you want to know what I thought about the retreat, it was my first time staying in the retreat on Celebrity. Make sure that you check back later because I'm going to have another video where I just break down all the elements of the retreat and tell you what I thought about my experience. And uh, you're probably going to want to check out that video because it wasn't the best first experience in the retreat. I'll say that. And I'll give you all those reasons why in that video, which is forthcoming. So let's kick it off right up top with the S for ship. And I've already gushed over the reflection, so you already know that I did like it. The reflection is a beautiful ship. I really was amazed from the moment I stepped on board. I think she's been kept in pretty great shape, again, to be a ship that came out in 2012. Now, reflection hasn't been refurbished or been revolutionized, as Celebrity likes to call it. So she doesn't have a lot of the modern aesthetics on the inside of some of the other Celebrity cruise ships that have been revolutionized. Uh, the staterooms certainly still have older decor across a large portion of the ship. Now I was staying, as I said, in the retreat, so I had a sky suite. I actually had a corner sky suite there on the very back of the ship, or a sunset sky suite. Uh, and I'm showing you some clips of my room now. You can see it's a beautiful room. It's very spacious, but it's very outdated. And most of the rooms on board the ship do have this outdated appearance. So the ship could definitely use some TLC in areas. In fact, in my bathroom, in my stateroom, even in the retreat, there were some like chips out of the glass in the bathroom and the mirror. There were some drawers that didn't shut all the way. So the ship overall needs some TLC. That's my point. But like I said, it is a good mix of the Solstice class and the Edge class of ships because uh, the Solstice class, I know a lot of people like to sell on those because they're just a classic cruise experience. You certainly have that on Reflection, but then you have the more modern art. You have more modern venues such as the Hideaway, which I thought was really cool. And I could see that on an Edge class of ships. So I just liked how the two classes were sort of merged a little bit. This Reflection is sort of the transition ship between what the Solstice class was and what the Edge series of ships ultimately would be. One other area of the ship I wanted to remark on was the internet. If you're uh, someone who depends on having fast internet, I know that's a question that folks ask online a lot now, especially with the uh, invent of Starlink and Starlink being brought to cruise ships now. The Reflection does have Starlink and that is like the fastest internet anywhere. And I think this was the fastest, most reliable internet I've ever had on a cruise ship. It was just tremendous. I uh, had the premium Wi-Fi, it came with the retreat, and that's the fastest Wi-Fi on board the ship. And it was so fast, it was so reliable, just every day, 
there was no issues at all. So I don't know what more I can say. A beautiful ship, a fantastic ship. Uh, I loved the layout, the design of the ship. I also loved that she had additional dining venues, which we'll talk about in just a second. Have really no major issues with the reflection. Now she is older, like I said, so I can't give it a perfect five out of five, but I will give the celebrity reflection instead a great four out of a five rating. Next up is the tea for taste, or we're gonna talk about the food. And I will say I'm gonna do a full food review video if you are a subscriber of mine. First of all, thank you. If you're not, please consider subscribing so that you can see the food review video that I do on Reflection. But I will walk you through every meal I had on board the cruise, and there's a lot on this one because I had access to Lumine. That full video of the food will be coming out very, very soon. Uh, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of food in this review video. Now, I didn't want to just eat in Lumine because I knew I would be doing this review and I wanted to tell you all my honest thoughts. So I did make sure to go to the buffet a couple of times. I also ordered from room service, I think like three or four days of the cruise. And then I also took advantage of a couple specialty dining opportunities as well. And these were both the new venues or the venues that are sort of exclusive to these newer Solstice class ships. So we'll start with the specialty dining and I'll start with Long Club Grill. Long Club Grill wasn't available on Solstice or Equinox. It's actually only available on Silhouette and Reflection. And it's actually in the location, if you've ever been on a Solstice class ship before, you know that up on the Lawn Club or up on the real grass that they have on the top deck of the ship, uh, they used to have a glass blowing experience. Well, not on Silhouette and Reflection. On Reflection, this is where the Lawn Club grill was. And it's this fascinating uh, venue that's like outside on the Lawn Club. So you're sitting on the very top of the ship outside uh, which is just tremendous. It's actually the predecessor, the direct predecessor to the Rooftop Garden Grill, which is featured on all of the Edge Class ships. So if you've eaten at Rooftop Garden Grill, then you already know what I'm talking about. Now, Long Club Grill does not feature the same menu as Rooftop Garden Grill. It's a little bit different, and I felt like it was a little bit outdated. It, certainly the menus are, and some of the like font and just the look of the restaurant, I feel like it could be updated a little bit, but uh, I was quite surprised by the food. So how it works is you go in, and for your starter, you get a flatbread. They were calling it a flatbread. It was really a pizza though that they brought. And there were all different types of options for pizza. I settled on the barbecue chicken pizza and it was fantastic. Uh, they also have a salad bar there that you can just walk up to and make your own salad. Think of this like the salad bar in the buffet. So everyone who ate at Lawn Club Grill got a flatbread or pizza. And then they also got access to the salad bar. And then you were able to pick your grilled items and everything there pretty much is grilled. They had fish offerings, they had chicken, they had steaks, they had burgers. So I settled on the ribeye steak and then they had an assortment of sides like baked potatoes, mac and cheese, baked beans, things like that. I had a really good meal. I was shocked with how good it was because as I said, as I looked at the menu, as I realized like, oh, we're having flatbreads for dinner, as there's like this weird salad bar here, can't be that great, right? It was tremendous. Had such a great meal there at Long Club Grill. And then for dessert, I had the warm skillet cookie with ice cream on top. And by the time it got to the table, the ice cream was all melted down in the cookie. Oh, it was perfection, y'all. So I really enjoyed Long Club Grill and can't recommend it enough. Now right next door to Long Club Grill, just right around the corner there actually, is a new venue or new to the Solstice class ships on Reflection venue uh, called The Porch. And The Porch, just like Long Club Grill, is outside uh, it's a little bit smaller of a venue than Long Club Grill, but the porch is open for lunch and dinner. And I think they're open every day for lunch and dinner. It was $30 for lunch. So I did go there one day and uh, it was pretty good. It wasn't as good as the Long Club Grill experience. They do have some unique appetizers. I enjoyed like some chicken wings that were really good. For the most part, I enjoyed the experience, but my entree was a little disappointing because I saw that they had a lobster roll. So I was like, of course I'm gonna get this lobster roll. It comes with chips and uh, well, you see the clip there. Look at that lobster roll. It was like smaller than the little bowl of, or ramekin rather, of chips. So it wasn't very big of an entree. And then the lobster roll itself sort of tasted like, uh, you know, you buy chicken salad or tuna salad at the grocery store. Uh, it sort of tasted like that. It was like pre-made, pre-packaged stuff. The roll was a little hard. So it wasn't quite as crazy about my meal that I had at the porch. You do get quite a bit of food. And those rolls that they bring you with the cheese in the middle of them, those are to die for. But uh, I think if you had to choose between the porch and Long Club Grill, I certainly would choose Long Club Grill. Had much better experience there at dinner. Wasn't able to get to lunch there, but really enjoyed the dinner. And uh, I would have loved to have gone for lunch if I had more time. Now, speaking of tremendous food on board the ship, I do have to say that the room service on board Celebrity Reflection was absolutely fantastic. Now, I was staying in the retreat, so room service was free. But do know, unless you're staying in the retreat, 
you're gonna pay $9.95 plus a service charge, I think it's like 18%, for room service, unless it's the Continental Breakfast offerings in the morning. So basically any time of the day other than like a three hour window in the morning, you're gonna pay for room service. But honestly, I think it's worth it. I had uh, quite a bit of food. I think three or four days I enjoyed lunch on my balcony for room service. I had the celebrity burger, the signature burger that they have at room service, and that is so good. I'm always amazed at how good a room service burger can be. And then I have the one on celebrity. I had several Caesar salads, because if you know me and you've watched my videos, you know I love a Caesar salad. Those were all very good. And then I had to have my favorite entree that they have at room service. And I can't believe how good this entree is. This is like something to get in the main dining room, honestly. I, every time I ate it, I was just wild. And I think I had it two or three days of the cruise. But the salmon that they have, uh, don't be put off by salmon on a room service menu because that salmon they have on celebrity cruises with the room service is tremendous. They have this sauce that you put on it. I don't know what that sauce is, y'all, but it's delicious. So make sure you're trying that salmon. It's worth the $9.95 plus service charge you're gonna pay for it. I promise you that. And then I also got some cookies and milk one day and those were good as well. So room service was tremendous. Uh, moving up to Ocean View Cafe, that's the main buffet on board the ship. I thought that was really good. I only ate there a couple of times for lunch. Uh, but they did have quite a few offerings and I know that's something that folks have been talking about online recently. Like there's no variety really uh, at the Ocean View Cafe on board celebrity ships. All the stations were had food, like there was no stations that were closed, they all had food, but they were repeating a lot of the food at the various stations. So let's say there's five stations total, three of those stations probably had the same offering. So I think they have reduced like the amount or the variety of food certainly to a degree, but the availability of food is still there. It's not like they're gonna go hungry at Ocean View Cafe. There might just not be as many selections as what you would have seen before. That was my experience at least on reflection. Cafe Albacho was another location on board the ship that I frequented. Of course, they have the pastries and the cookies. The cookies, y'all, I'm happy to report at Cafe Albacho are still free. So happy to report that. There was some controversy around that recently, but they were still free on reflection and they were still good. I also got some coffee there. The service was always tremendous at Cafe Albacho, so really enjoyed that. And then, of course, there was Lumine. I had a breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Lumine just as much as I could. As I mentioned, Lumine is exclusive to guests staying in the retreat. And that's one of the reasons that I booked the retreat. I have eaten a couple of times at Luminae before and I'm like, oh, I just gotta get back there for a week and just have you know unlimited access to Luminae. So I went there for breakfast most days because most days, whether we were in port or we were at sea, they were open breakfast and dinner at least. And then the one sea day we had and actually embarkation day, so two days of the entire cruise, they were open for lunch. The food for the most part was pretty good and I will talk more about the food and review that when I get to my uh, retreat review video, but uh, the service is where it's at when it comes to Luminae. They have the best service probably on board the entire ship in Luminae. And a shout out, if you're watching, to all of my friends that I made, all of the great service that I had inside of Luminae. I really appreciate all the hard work for those folks. They worked so hard. All that considered, for all the food I had on board Celebrity Reflection, I'm going to give a great score of a 4 out of a 5 rating. Next up is the E for entertainment. And uh, i got to be honest, I was quite taken aback by the entertainment on board the ship because I think uh, of all the cruises I've been on with celebrities so far, this one probably had the weakest in terms of entertainment options. The cruise director, I think I only saw her once the entire cruise. Of course, I heard her on the loudspeaker, but she wasn't that visible around the ship, which I think is, uh, it, that's kind of different from what I've experienced with celebrity. It doesn't make much difference for me, but I know a lot of people like to see that visibility from the cruise director. They like to see the cruise director around the ship and be able to interact with the cruise director wasn't that visible on board Celebrity Reflection. Now for a nine day cruise, I do feel like we had uh, not that many stage production shows. There were only three and they weren't really spread out. They all seemed to be toward the end of the cruise. In fact, it was like four or five nights into the cruise before we had the first stage production show. So there was like a block, like the first four or five nights of the cruise of just guest entertainers. And by that, I mean like there was like a juggler one night, there was like a family, uh, comedian type guy who would do like tricks and things like that. Uh, there was a couple of vocalists. Now all these were pretty good entertainers. I'm not speaking to, um, you know, their ability or really down on them because they did a great job for what they were there to do. But I just felt like there could have been a comedy offering. There was no stand-up comedy at all on board the ship. And I love stand-up comedy on a cruise. Most cruises you go on, they're going to have at least one stand-up comic. Some time or another throughout the cruise, but not on board Celebrity Reflection. Now, they did have music all around the ship, of course. They did have trivia a lot of times. They did have a uh, Deal or No Deal game show. Uh, they had some other little uh, game shows there in um, 
the, like the little atrium there on deck four up toward the forward of the ship. They also had movies uh, quite often up on the rooftop uh, portion of the ship. There's a movie screen out on the lawn there and then also in Celebrity Central. So uh, a lot of offerings, I just didn't feel they were very strong or great offerings. So for entertainment, I'm only given a three out of a five rating on Celebrity Reflection. Next up is the P and P is for ports. And like I said, I was on a nine day cruise around the Mediterranean. My cruise left Barcelona, Spain and ended in Rome. And it was an action packed. We only had one sea day. So other than that one sea day, we were in port every single day. So it was a good itinerary, but it was a busy itinerary. And most Everything I have to say about the itinerary is great. Uh, I don't really have any negatives. If I'm really gonna nitpick something, I'm gonna say it's probably the overnight in Livorno because we did do two days in Livorno and stayed overnight in port one day. Now Livorno is the port that's close to Florence and also Pisa. So you'll see that advertiser on your itinerary as Florence slash Pisa. Uh, but it's actually quite a ways from both of those places. And I realize that they do stay there in Livorno because it is in the Tuscany region of Italy and folks like to go out and see as much as they can. There's a lot to see in those regions, but uh, I just felt like we could use one of those days to go to a different port uh, and to see something else. Another downside is the small group excursions. Now, because I was in the retreat, they did give me $600 onboard credit that came with my booking in the retreat. So I did book all of my excursions. I did this cruise with Celebrity. Most of them were fine. I had a great time at all of them. I did an excursion with Celebrity in Nice. I did another one in Livorno, and we went to a little farmhouse experience there in Tuscany. Did another one in Messina down in Sicily. Uh, so really great excursions from Celebrity. However, the one that I did in Livorno, it was a uh, like pasta making experience and then a farmhouse visit. This was advertised as one of their small group excursions. And so I thought this was gonna be a group of maybe 10, 20 people at most uh, however, when I checked in for my excursion that morning and we boarded the bus, there was like 35 people in our group. So I would just ask Celebrity to define small group for me because I don't feel like 35 when you're normally in a group of 50. That's only 15 less, right? Like let's at least cut it by half, right? And call it small group. That's just another minor complaint of mine. But um, that's the first time I've ever done one of those small group excursions. But I was like, there's a lot of people here. Now the highlight of this itinerary, I have to say while we're talking about ports, is Genoa. This was my first time ever visiting Genoa. That day I was able to walk off the ship and just walk around the port area, walk into the city of Genoa, go to the aquarium, which is a fantastic aquarium. So you all must visit Genoa if you can. So with all that being said, I'm going to give the P for ports on board my cruise on Celebrity Reflection a solid four out of a five rating. Next up is the S for service. And uh, overall, the service around the ship was fine. You know, it, it's a standard average service that you're gonna expect on a celebrity cruise, right? Which is pretty much above, ahead above all the other cruise lines. Celebrity has the best food and they have the best service at sea and I will always stand by that. However, there were some issues with service on board Celebrity Reflection. And again, this might be where the review is a little bit skewed because I'm talking more about my experience that I had in the retreat. Before the cruise, Celebrity had sort of slashed dedicated butler service to the Sky Suites, which is what I was staying in. They didn't communicate that very well. Actually, they didn't communicate that at all to those of us who had a Sky Suite booked. And then my experience with what butler or retreat host I ended up having was not great. And like I said, I'll detail all these things in my forthcoming retreat review because that more appropriately fits in that review. But I didn't want to say I had issues with service there that had to be addressed by celebrities. So I'm definitely taking points from that because that was a large part of my experience. I did notice uh, in my specialty dining, there was uh, like some slow service in specialty dining. There was inconsistent service in the specialty dining, particularly at the Lawn Club Grill. You know, I had to deduct some points from that. So for service on board Celebrity Reflection, like I said, it was average and good for the most part, but I did have definitely some big issues with the in the retreat in the butler service that I was promised. But I'm gonna give a 3.5 out of a five rating for service on board Celebrity Reflection. So when we consider all those things together and add up all those scores, my overall rating for my cruise on board Celebrity Reflection is a 3.7 out of a five. And I had a tremendous time. Again, the ship itself, the Celebrity Reflection, I have to say, it's probably my third favorite Celebrity cruise ship now. Of course, it's gonna be hard to beat any of the Edge series of ships. The Celebrity Apex remains my favorite ship at sea, uh, but Celebrity Reflection has moved up the list. You know, maybe it's above Edge, I don't know, but uh, it's a great ship. If you have the opportunity to sail on it, I highly recommend that you do so. It's kind of unfortunate that they're making this ship sort of a short haul 
cruise ship. I know they're sending it back to the Caribbean. It's gonna stay on the Caribbean full time. It's not gonna go back to Europe or any other part of the world. It's year round gonna be in the Caribbean. And they're gonna be doing like three and four day booze cruises on the Celebrity Reflection. And I think that is just so unfortunate. I feel like this ship is so beautiful. This ship is so great. This ship is so like classic celebrity. I would think they would wanna take this ship you know, let it be their headline ship or one of their headline ships, certainly their headline Solstice class ship in the Mediterranean or send it to Australia or Asia. You know, why not take the Solstice, which is a great ship and I loved it. You know, why not take it out of Asia and bring it to the Caribbean and let it do those three and four day cruises? Why the reflection? I feel like it's such a good ship. It's such a great improvement above and on all the other Solstice class ships. Why does it have to be that one that's going to be like relegated to these short like booze cruises? from Florida. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know down in the comments down below. But if you do get an opportunity to sail on a Celebrity Reflection cruise, you're gonna enjoy it. She's a great ship. She has a lot to offer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, go down below, give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already because I have a lot more to come from the Celebrity Reflection and a lot more cruise content to come in general, including cruise reviews from other cruise ships and cruise lines just like this one. So thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.